For today's lipids and lifestyle, we will be reviewing vegetables. A brief overview of what we'll be discussing is the overview and the benefits of vegetables, the serving size of vegetables, shopping tips, incorporation tips, and finally meal ideas. Vegetables are a huge component of the Mediterranean diet with the goal being that an average person should be eating about six to seven servings of a vegetable a day. So what is six to seven servings? What is a serving? That is about 10.8 ounces if you're a male or 9.8 if you're a female. Though it's easier to consider one cup raw or half a cup cooked vegetables. Some ways to do this include incorporating vegetables into every meal, having a lot of variety of your vegetables and varieties in the colors and limiting the starchy vegetables or vegetables like the potato to one to two servings a week. Going back to that serving size being one cup raw or half a cup to cook, a good way to re remember this is to think of your fist as the approximately the size of one cup of fruit or vegetables that is your raw vegetables, and then think about the average size of a light bulb being approximately half of a cup of your cooked vegetables. Still getting five to seven servings can seem daunting, but when we rem remember that healthy plate, the fruits and the vegetables should be taking up about half of your plate. So when we look at this example on the slide, we can see that we have that one serving of the broccoli and what looks like tomatoes and cucumber that is half of our plate and that is about two servings so if we do that every single meal we can hit that goal of five to seven so what is a vegetable a vegetable is any plant other than a fruit or a seed that we consume vegetables are full of nutrients that make them really great for us to consume. They're very high in fiber, vitamins, minerals, and phytonutrients, but they're very low in those calories and those fats. Not to say calories and fats are not important, but when we look at the benefits of vegetables, they have these other aspects that they're really high in. So discussing fiber a bit more, since it is so high in vegetables, fiber provides vegetables with their structure and they're indigestible by humans. So what does that mean for us? Fiber is found in nearly all vegetables and it's really important for us, given that it helps normalize our bowel movements and have a healthy bowel um, system. It lowers our cholesterol, stabilizes blood sugars and decreases hunger. There are two types of fiber. There are the soluble fibers, and this is the fibers that are going to slow down your digestive system, which also helps to slowly have a slow rise in your blood sugar. They also help decrease cholesterol. Some examples include oat bran, barley, nuts, seeds, beans, lentils, peas, among others. Insoluble fiber helps food pass more quickly through your digestive tract. Some examples include wheat bran and whole grains. Many fruits and vegetables fall into both categories, um, just depending on which aspect of the vegetable you're looking at. When we are looking at the nutrition label, we do see on the back that there are the amount of fibers in the in each in that product. So we can see that when looking at the servings with our raw carrots and our celery, all the way on the side, we can see that that has two grams. The smoothie has five and then the drink, which is more of a juice, has one gram. So it's important to remember that when you are taking your vegetables and you're juicing them down, you're gonna lose a lot of that fiber. 
we talked earlier about the fact that vegetables are very high in a lot of really important things. So that was your vitamins, minerals, and your phytonutrients, your phytochemicals. But it's also important to note that among all of the vegetables, the amount of these vitamins, minerals, and phytochemicals vary. So that is why it is so important to follow the recommendation of eating the rainbow so you can ensure that your body is getting the wide range that it needs. We've talked a bit about the term phytonutrient or phytochemical. But what really is that? This is a broad term describing chemicals within the plant foods that have a positive effect on the body. So these are things like antioxidants that remove free radicals that are in the body. Uh, free radicals can be really harming and found to be the, the cause or a side effect of a lot of diseases. One study found that an additional 1.5 servings of fruits and vegetables per day was associated with a 2.6% lower incidence in men and a 2.3% lower incidence of cancer in women. So that is why it's so important to get these uh, phytonutrients in our system by consuming our vegetables. There are so many different types of phytonutrients and they are intermixed in all of our vegetables, which is why it's so important to eat the rainbow. Just to give a bit of an example of some of the phytonutrients you'll see in each of your vegetables, a good rule of thumb is to consider that your lycopene phytonutrient is really high in the red vegetables, beta carotene in orange, and vitamin C in yellow. It's really easy to think that just because a vegetable is raw, it would be really high in that phytonutrient, but tomatoes have a higher amount of lycopene when they are cooked versus when they are raw. Other phytonutrients include folate uh, in our green vegetables, our alkaloosulfides in our green white. and our anthocyanins and our purple vegetables. When considering the food store and purchasing fresh vegetables, it can be fairly intimidating. Some good tips to keep in mind are shopping with the vegetables that are in season. These vegetables are gonna be more nutritious and often cheaper. Shopping at the local farmer's market is not only great for, to help your community and the local economy, but you can also have locally grown produce that is very nutritious. And finally, don't feel the need to go organic. So many studies have shown that there is not necessarily nutritionally superior aspects of organic food. And sometimes it's just you're paying more for something that's basically the same. When bringing your fresh fruits and when bringing your fresh fruits and vegetables home, it's really important to consider how to store them properly. A great rule of thumb is to follow this basic chart with storing some of your vegetables on the counter versus the pantry, and then when to put them in the fridge and where in the fridge to put them. If fresh vegetables is not something that you can do, a great option is frozen vegetables. Frozen vegetables can be sometimes even more nutritious and more cost effective. It's really important when you're looking at your fresh, your frozen vegetables to make sure that you are getting flash frozen, low sodium, um, no sauce, no seasoning added. So a great example is our green giant broccoli and cheese sauce. When we look at the back of that container, we look at the nutrition label, we can see it is much higher in sodium and the fats, and we're not getting the base of the vegetable like we want versus this steam fresh by bird's eye, which is a microwavable broccoli in this image that is just completely broccoli alone. 
Canned vegetables are another great option for people. Some tips for shopping for your canned vegetables are to look for low sodium or no salt added. Another option is to rinse your vegetables before you eat or cook them. It can be intimidating at times to consider how to incorporate so many vegetables into your diet, but there's a lot of ways to incorporate more. So adding the vegetables into foods that you already eat. So putting the vegetables onto a pizza, filling your sandwich with vegetables, omelets are a great way, and then adding this bright pop of color to your pasta dishes. Vegetables can be a great snack. You can have frozen vegetables on hand if you need something really quick. And just swapping out some of your crunchy potato chips for a crunchy carrot and celery can also be a great way to consider. Now we're going to go over some of the tips about how to prepare your vegetables. It's always important to prep your vegetables by washing them, uh, giving your fresh vegetables a th thorough wash, even those that come into a bag, uh, like your leafy greens that say pre-washed or washed twice. And then you can cook your vegetables in a variety of ways. You can steam them, microwave them, saute, roast, and we'll be going over each of these a bit more. How to steam your vegetables. This will be discussing how to steam on the stove, though you can steam in the microwave as well. For the stove, you will fill a pot with water and place it on a medium high heat. Place a steamer into the pot. You should ensure that water is not getting into the bottom of the steamer. So if water is going through the bottom of your steamer, you will want to empty some of that water. You should place your vegetables into the steamer and cover, and then cook your vegetables based on the recommended times shown below. How to saute. Add a saute pan to a stove that is um, heat turned on to medium heat. Add oil. Once the oil is heated, you can start to add some of your aromatic spices at this point, like garlic. When your garlic is starting to cook, you can add in your vegetables that you've already washed and cut into your desired um, size and shape. It's really important to make sure your vegetables are cut approximately the same size to ensure equal cooking times. And then do not crowd the pan. So you want to have a little bit of space in between each vegetable. This will allow you to make sure you get a, a good cook on each side. How to microwave. This is another way in which you can almost steam a vegetable. So in a microwave safe bowl, you're going to add your vegetable that is pre-washed, pre-cut. You're going to add one to two tablespoons of water. You are going to cover that bowl with plastic wrap and poke a few holes into it. This should be done with a fork, preferably not your knife, and putting in about five to six is great. Microwave for three to four minutes. When removing Please be careful, the bowl is going to be very hot. Once you feel that the bowl and the plastic wrap are cool enough for you to touch, you're going to remove the plastic wrap, starting with the edge that is away from you and lifting up the plastic wrap away from you to ensure the steam does not burn you. If you find that there's water remaining, you can drain the vegetables or um, in the sink and then you season the vegetables as desired. When roasting our vegetables, we will start with preheating the oven to approximately 425 degrees. Some recipes need this lower, some higher. 425 is a great place to start. You are going to wash and cut up your vegetables into uniform size. Toss vegetables with oil and spices and herbs at this point. Add to an oven safe dish. 
be sure that once your vegetables are in place, you spread out the vegetables that, so there is uh, no crowding and the layers should be in, they should all be in one layer. You will leave in the oven until vegetables are tender. This can be around 20 minutes or more depending on the vegetable. It's also beneficial to remove the tray from the oven and shake the vegetables around if you have a sort of um, oil or balsamic glaze on them. There are many ways to incorporate vegetables into your diet. One recipe idea for breakfast is a vegetable frittata. This can be full of vegetables that you can eat throughout the week for breakfast. Um, you can have some broccoli, some leafy greens like kale, spinach, chard, peppers, onions. It's best to be prepared for those midday snacks. One way is to have some pre-cut up vegetables in the fridge and a homemade Greek yogurt dip. You can easily turn Greek yogurt into a ranch dip for yourself by adding in the proper spices and herbs to it. This makes for a great and satisfying snack. For lunch, if you are short on time, you can easily microwave some broccoli and dress it in a lemon garlic vinaigrette and have a nutritious side for your lunch. A dinner idea is to roast balsamic vegetables. You can do any sort of non-starchy vegetables that you want. Broccoli and Brussels sprouts make a great addition to this. Tossed in with a balsamic uh, glaze that you make. Roasting a sweet potato is really beneficial. Roasting allows for caramelization of the natural sugars. The potato is now sweeter and can be substituted for a lot of other ingredients that call for sugar. This can be done by washing your sweet potato and drying it. You will place it in an oven that's preheated to 400 degrees. Cook the potato for 50 minutes. Once that 50 minutes is reached, you will Turn the oven off, but leave the potato in the oven for 10 more minutes. When the potato is removed, the skin should almost have, the potato should have almost pulled away from the skin. A roasted beet can be done by washing and drying the beet, wrapping in tin foil, and placing in the oven that is preheated to 400 degrees. Let the beet roast for about 40 minutes, once the beet is done, removed, and cool to touch, run under water. This will allow you to peel the skin off the beet in a much easier way, and it will allow you to incorporate this beet into other meal ideas versus buying pre-pickled beet. We discussed a lot of meal ideas today. I think it's also really important to remember that you can use so many aspects of these vegetables and one idea is to use some of these aspects to make your own vegetable broth. So looking at the charts on the slide, you can see some ideas of some great vegetable scraps that you can place and keep on the side for making your own broth later on.